And it's Grimm's Comics Corner with Transmetropolitan. We didn't get to do it last week, so here we go with book three. Here to go. Rodney Ramos, Inker. Yeah, I mean, it's Warren Ellis writes and Derek Robertson pencils. An unsettling moment at the presidential inauguration when the new president appeared to speak in tongues for a full minute. Just a cough, says Advisor Schacht. On current movements, the rain falling on central and western areas of the city has proceeded to cease in nine minutes. English author declares U.S. culture of victims beaten to death by crowd. Participants sue author's family for damage incurred to knuckles, fingernails. I love the city in the rain. The last of the spring rains is here, soft on the light wind, the sort of spring breeze that ruffles your hair like a playful sister, if you've got hair. People on the street stop now to open their drink to open their mouths, drink it in, drink it down, cold and clean and fresh. Couldn't do that when I was a kid. The rain was poison. We'd hide from it, cover our faces if we were facing a firestorm, like some bastard god was pissing acid on us. Not that I'd blame him. Now I watch it running over girls' chins, making their skin glisten like pure and elegantly worked crystal. Down on the street, phone ports, sidewalk screens, and road control arches are made new again by the water. And children lead wonderfully unbelieving old women by the hand into the rain. I remember first learning about death quite vividly. I'm not sure how old I was, but I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. My grandfather had died, and my mother was trying to explain it to me. Sometimes when someone gets ill, and they're very, very old, they don't get better again. They just get iller and iller, and then their body stops working. I don't understand. What's in them just goes away and doesn't come back. Grandpa isn't coming back? No, she said. Not ever again. Grandpa said he was going away, not ever coming back, after he held Grandma's head in that condom dump outside of town and kicked Skeeter 73 times. Grandpa was very drunk. That's not the same as being dead. Grandpa's dead, son. He's not there anymore. And I remember saying, hold everything right fucking there. You in all the trouble of conceiving me and giving birth to me and raising me and feeding me and clothing me and all. And yeah, whipping me from time to time and making me live in a house that's freezing fucking cold all the goddamn time. And you make me cry and things hurt so much and disappointments crush my heart every day. And I can't do half the things I want to do and sometimes I just want to scream. And what I've got to look forward to is my body breaking and something flipping off the switch in my head. I go through all this and then there's death. What is the motherfucking deal here? I wasn't having this. This was not fair. There's no way you could expect me to put up with all that daily shit and note at the end of it all when you presume things have to get better. You just die. It was explained to me that this wasn't so bad. I mean, I could expect a century or so of lifespan. There was a time when a guy who died at 40 was revered as the toughest and most doggedly ancient son of a bitch and cow ass clearing shithole shire England back in the year dot. So great. Happy, happy, after countless centuries, things have gotten to the point where I'd live, outlive Fred or Nostril. Uh, no, I'd outlive Fred of Nostril, official sheep jerker offer in the king, <laughs> to the king when the days when the dinosaurs roamed the, roamed the earth. I was unthrilled. To say the least. I'll never forget that day. It was like being stamped on. It was the old joke told to a kid for the first time. Life sucks and then you die. Here just to die. Here to go. Damn. Anyway, the first time I found death funny. Couldn't help myself. It was terrible really. Dad was driving a bus for a living. The run from the docks to the far terminus of the fourth canal. His shift finished about the same time school got out, so sometimes I'd walk down to the bus depot to meet him for a ride home. One day I'd get there and see Mad Rahu Gumbeer being led out of the deep depot in tears. Moo hoo ha ha! Mad Rahu Gumbeer was the man who drove the Bedford Handsmith Run. The only man who drove the Bedford Handsmith Run. 
Mad Rahu Gum Beer was a one-man arsenal. The man who could reduce you to a smear of protein even when... Hey! Even when stripped naked and missing his entire top three layers of skin. Which was indeed how he killed the butchers of Spring Corner when they ambushed his bus, robbed all the passengers, and tortured him for the code to the on-bus fare safe. Sean Combs Sherlock and the other and the other one, the Brady brothers, resting in peace inside the canister. Three joint remains were scrapped into, scraped into, brother. Their <coughs> their joint remains were scraped into. He dropped acid bombs from little hatches at the base of his testicles, pissed his assembler all over them, blinded them with or organ-specific toxins sprayed from his nipples, and claimed he did it all for the Virgin Mary, who he said lived down a street and wore Indian army boots. He was my hero. And here he was, the single hardest and frightening man I'd ever known, the only adult I truly respected, crying like a baby. I couldn't help it. I asked him what was, what was wrong. I squashed a nun. He took the corner at Suster's end, smoothed and controlled as usual, thinking about the gun emplacements facing him up at the road at Wilkes Booth at, at Wilkes Booth Field looking ahead. And on the right, this goddamn nun, pedaling away on her push bike, just blissfully singing and flapping and obviously trusting the god to keep her safe so she doesn't have to bother looking where she's fucking going, shoots straight under the wheels of the bus. And the last thing he sees of her, I swear it's true, Wow. Would I lie about a thing like that? I remember looking up at Mad, <clears throat> Mad Rahu Gum Beer, the single hardest man in my little world, with nun juice on his uniform and a broken soul glittering in his eyes. And I laughed myself sick. Listen, I'll catch up with you later. The older I get, the more I like it out here by the water. pre -shush. Manny's Platform 5. What, you want to hear something disgusting? Fucking vultures. Alright, I got one for you. She's 18 years old. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's a dancer. She's essentially goddamn perfect. And she spends every day trying to tamp down her hysterical terror. Every fucking day. She misses her brother. Her brother was kind to her, you see. Her mother was a mad religious domestic terrorist who ruled by guilt and fear. Her eldest brother was a half-bright thing, well on the way to a violent monsterdom. And her father was a ghost in an armchair, silent and insubstantial. But her older brother, also older than her, he was kind. One day the kids from the housing project, where they yanked mutated frogs out of the sewage flow and fuck them were throwing, ro were throwing rocks at her. That housing project's still there, you know. In Millennium Dip, Northeast, apparently the frogs explode on your dick at the moment of orgasm. Anyway, she bumped into her brother running home and sobbed that the boys were throwing rocks. He knelt down in front of her, cupped her little face in his hands, and smiled a quiet smile and said, Don't worry, sis. One day they'll be throwing flowers. He started having sex on her when she was 13. Never penetrated. She was actually a virgin when I met her. Virgin. Virgin. I know you've heard of them, asshole. Bought her a toy after each time. A little present. Our little secret, sis. Imagine something with me. You're a 13-year-old girl. and You've got a row of beautifully cuddly toys on your shelf. Imagine being goddamn 13 and thinking, I got that bear for letting my brother come on my breasts. He does this to her for two years before deciding that he's a bad boy. He throws himself in front of a train. Splat. Traumatizes the train driver for life because he hasn't left enough fucking human wreckage behind. Blasts the family. Destroys her heart. I found all this in, out in one night. Anniversary of his death. She cried all night because he was her brother and she loved him and missed him and wanted him back. He systematically sexually abused her over a two year period. And she missed him because... He was her brother and she loved him. Fucking disgusts me every time I think about it. It's like being attacked by my Uncle Idy. He could fart in color. Your instinct is always to complain about the bugs and shit in Puritan Muse, you know? And then you catch yourself and think, Hell, ain't so long since we thought we'd sprayed and stamped and infected those little the little bastards to extinction. Why be that stupid again? Why be that stupid still? 
I always thought people were essentially bright, distracted, sure, and weak, beaten, but never stupid. And then you show them, here's the two people who want to be president. One is evil, but you can deal with him because he actually harbors beliefs. The other one will wear any lie, wear any mask to become president. Not only that, he fucking hates you, and he's doing this just so he can make your lives hell. And who do you think they vote for? Stupid. Time was I thought maybe people were worth, I don't know. Hmm, how would I like to die? Well, I wouldn't. Okay, okay, I've got a place up in the mountains. Big compound. It's behind a big garden. Oh, <clears throat> and behind it's a big garden. There we go. And one day I'm going to go back there for good. And I'm going to fix up that garden. And if I'm going to die anywhere, it'll be out there. Somewhere quiet with flowers. I think I've earned that. Something quiet. Fuck off now, would you? Okay, okay, thanks, Mr. Jerusalem. It's going to make a hell of a segment. I said thanks. All done? Yeah, I guess. Amazes me the shit you people will make. Listening to him talk about death all, the, all fucking day would make me welcome death. Hey, people are interested in what celebrities think about death. The last series of interviews just devoured that season's Nielsen's. Yeah, well, whatever fee. Huh? There's a fee for Mr. Jerusalem's, Jerusalem's thoughts, remember? Um, yes, of course. Just give me a second here. Shannon. God, he's not even cute, is he? I want to see some form of finance out of you right goddamn now, or I should be forced to modify your head and several vital organs. Go straight to the hideous beating. We can pillage his bits once he's in a coma. Twenty-one days in the city. My name's Spider Jerusalem. I'm the most beloved man in this city. I am a journalist. I write a column for a newspaper called The Word, entitled I Hate It Here, because I do. I hate it, and I hate you, and you love me for it. That's the way it works, and if you argue with the way it works, I'll kick off the top of your head and shit on your living brain, and you will love me for it. Thank God for me. The city changes its makeup. Its foundation's gone scabby. Lipstick kissed off, mascara run down its face. Down come the beast colors, all gray and doomed. Their bite and bluster all dried up and blown down rustling autumn streets. And everywhere blooming the smiler's colors, a palaise of victory bouquets across the city. First he fucks the city, then he buys her a new dress. Lovely. Maybe we should count ourselves lucky he didn't just wipe his dick on our knee and toss five bucks onto the bed. She hasn't brushed her hair. His hair is still dewy with droplets from the shower. Their eyes, too, used to be half light, get half burned out by the sunshine. They groan, lean on each other, and laugh at themselves. Share his last cigarette in front of the hotel waiting for a cab, or perhaps two. I spent last night sniffing cat urine. The cat pissed in some mystery cesspool she keeps somewhere in the apartment I have yet to locate. I lay there, cat urine festering in my twitching nostrils, listening to both my assistants having sex with near-brain-dead teenagers they picked up at some retard bar over in West Egg. For nine hours and twenty-seven minutes. I'm doing mechanics, he says, fingers tapping an unconscious urgency on the sharp edges of a credit card-sized AI computer brain. Same kind of servant mind you find in your maker. One that comes with a standard chemical scanning gear that checks your food is fit for consumption. Some bastard here is selling mechanics and he wants some. Not needs. Not yet. Mechanics is, at least begins, as a drug. One new enough that we haven't yet developed addiction resistance to it. A drug whose chemical code is also a machine code. Make the AI card scan the drug. Do the drug yourself and you and, you and the machine intelligence both get good and fucked up. The drug creates a connection between your mind and the AI. The AI breaks into your head and starts messing around with your DNA. Move a chemical here, juggle some more there, and a human tissue becomes mineral matter. You grow mechanics, the high passes, the mechanics remain. The sucking continues. Cock is seen on TV, the original UL approved servo phallic device. What? Oh, let me look at this again. All right, there we go. Hmm. 
Medio bought himself a new set of genitals today. He's very proud of them. They were made by a Uruguayan firm known for the reliability of the sensitive sensitivity of their product. They're also known for having their products built by children working in dangerous conditions earning less than a dollar a month, but that doesn't bother Mateo. Oh no, Mateo's got the genitals he always wanted now. They're exactly like the genitals he used to have, only with a mini disc player. Not bad. Sometimes this place just stops and hits you in the eyes. I'm on a train to Venetian End to cover the interesting competition at the public sinks there, passing through the western lakes. Sunny day. Trout and salmon blasting through the channels and rivers that connect the lakes to each other in the sea. And then I see a dolphin. And then I see a temp. Someone wearing animal traits for a weekend. And for a moment there, I don't have any words. And when the sun falls down on this city, it's transformed. It blooms again. In impossible blazes of a million colors you'd forget never existed. Winter's been here so long. It wakes me, shakes me from the gray I've been living in, reminds me why I'm alive, why I'm here, and why I do what I do. My filthy assistants disagree, and I have to force them blinking and cursing into the light as if prodding them into walking the plank, which thought also warms me as if I, if the sun were in my belly. My editor. Mitchell Royce makes me attend a media exploitation meeting at the offices of the Word, a crapulous rag you currently have slowly dissolving in your hands. It does not go well. I am shown magical truth saying bastard spidey animated versions of my own columns in the manner of Japanese cartoons. I am shown enough useless shit to make shelters for every war refugee in western England. I am forced to rem remonstrate. Well... Oh to remonstrate physically with the media rep until Roy stuns me with wads of royalty money. Don't come near, I am wild and dangerous. What? I got one of them on the toilet. Right love is somehow becoming a cause celebre among the great and good. Huey Three Flint Knife, their founder and spokesman, is handsome, witty, and impassioned. His friends, like Bobby Long, plainly worship him. Long spent his two years in jail writing a history of the movement that was nothing more than a hymn to Huey. Influential producer and cultural compass, uh, compass Burnt Shenfield, said upon meeting him, If he's not Mao, I'll eat it. Please allow me to remind everyone that Wright's love aim of pr freeing sexuality is quite specific, having sex with pre-sexual humans. Don't look for media proved ideologically sound right ca causes where there are none. Look out of the window instead and do something about what you see there. My dreams come true. A strain of intelligent sociopathic dog has arisen in the dank sores of Hillbury Death, northeast of, the, northeast of the Fourth Canal Terminus. These criminal vermin have terrorized the decent people there so badly and have bred so prodigiously that the Civic Center is permitting, for only the third time in living memory, a coal. Smart or not, dogs have no rights. I ponder this awful searing injustice as I fondle my volunteer callmaster pass and assemble my arsenal. Sometimes life is sweet. I grew up here during its worst years. Fresh crocodile shit piled against front doors, screaming in the dockland chill. It was never warm here. Never. Mom picking up fat dock lizards, dashing their brains out on Dad and throwing them on the fire, watching them blacken and split and catch, squirting hot fat out of the hearth. Spending days and nights sitting out on the sidewalk with the other kids, listening to all our parents spouting uneducated, hate-filled bullshit over cheap beers and thinking, Is this it? Is that me in 20 years? And planning our escapes from 8 years old, planning our grand escapes from our lives. Whenever I come back here... I wonder who got out. I love shopping. No, really. Nothing pleases me more than wandering through a good market's aisles, my gun tapping musically on the cart steel, stun grenades bumping my leg companionably. Spiced seahorses and brine, fresh chimp heads on ice along with the salmon, manatee, and whale, powdered children from Ireland mixed up in a jug of vodka for those summer days on the balcony. What a time to be alive when delicacies from all over the world, some only half imagine, are there to be had on a nearby shelf. Ha! 
about her now. Irish children. Powdered baby seal, bear testes, nutritious and energizing, dingo and baby, weasel bits, Martian jack dog steak. Thank you for shopping, Maxima. This cart releases an Ebola level virus when we're moved to a lot. I had one of those weird cro uh, cross lines the other day, the ones that connect you to Mars. I'm guessing it's something to do with the revolutionary faction on Pylon 9, who most people are certain are only rebelling because they feel they really ought to. It's a cultural expectation. I ended up having phone sex with a nominal female who had a sequence of filtration pipes, vacuum seals, and musical valves instead of a mouth. She sent me a picture later, though, and she had pretty lips. I'm oddly depressed. Listen to filthy assistants having wild fantasy steroid monkey sex again last night. I live behind a wall so high it gets more difficult each day to see over it. When I first returned to the streets of the city, I was put into a hopeless shithole. Once I'd made the word some money, I got them to move me to Poop and Grove, which was nicer, and filled with people who were something in media. That place turned out to be insecure, and I was moved to the expensive Safe Chase Square. And when I broke the Josh Free story, they set me up in an ultra-exclusive Puritan Muse here. And now I can't see the street anymore. Did you ever want to set someone's head on fire just to see what it looked like? Did you ever stand on the street and think to yourself, I could make that nun go blind just by giving her a kiss? Did you ever lay out plans for stitching babies and stray cats into a perfect new human? Did you ever stand naked, surrounded by people who want your gleaming sperm, squirting frankincense, soma, and testosterone from every pore? If so, then you're the bastard who stole my drugs Friday night, and I'll find you. Oh, yes. Children found playing on or near this dumpster will be shot and or dismembered. Please keep your voice down. Your homeless neighbor sleeping inside will thank you. Sumo is the most perfect of sports. It has elegance, ceremony, danger, art, speed, and most important, two fat bastards smacking the shit out of each other. It is immaculate, which is why it has remained essentially unchanged for thousands of years. It remains the only thing in the world I, that I want to see stay static. The only thing I love that loves me back. Wow. He met God in the night, walking to his hotel in the rain like he was written by Hemingway, stepping slowly through a place where nurses die if you kiss them and syphilis steals your friends the minute you look away. God stopped and talked to him for a while, quite sullen words in the heart of the dark. And then by essential street station, God sat down and wept. Hmm. He, the kid who told me this, suffers from that naivete trait where parent, yeah, that parents thought were cute 20 years ago. He has pre-civilization neural connectivity where we have instinct that, no, you shouldn't cross the road. He hallucinates God telling him not to cross the road. I've heard that naivete trait is getting trendy again. If you're thinking about it, think about the boy weeping uncontrollably as God cries for him not to cross the street. I've got a data miner running. It's comparing missing persons against personality traits in domestic situations. The person who killed Vita Severn was so thoroughly vaporized that no evidence whatsoever remained apart from the gun, which was sanitized. Once I've got a spread of names, I can have questions asked. I can cover the story. No one's getting away with this. The new president has promised to fuck me over. But if I can manage this, I can get him first. If I've been getting headaches lately. Not for publication. The internal strife in Ludgate East finally burned itself out in a couple of years back. Everyone thought the bombed out district would just rot since there was no way Civic Center was going, were going to send cash. No one figured on the assholes though. The Taurus assholes come for a holiday in someone else's, uh, someone else's misery. And their retro Viet Cong black pajamas and urban camo dresses here to see what an actual war looks like. And the rebels smile and say hi, I'm Marcellus the 
the 30th. I'll be your guide for today. Selling toy ram cars made from spent shelves. So this corp wants to show me show me they love me like unto a god by giving me a new for fuck's sake television set. A proximedia they called it. Rider signals on the regular digital feed talk to a small maker inside the set which pumps out all factory mix and force feed waves. You can see TV, hear it, and now smell it, taste it, and feel it. I am sad to report that it will not be a hit and that applying it to remastered old films was not clever. Despite the possibilities, I found myself groped by Vincent Price, forced to taste divine, and attacked by the special scent of several unwashed porn stars being intimate with donkeys. And my filthy assistants were all licked by war and oats. Terrible goddamn place. Some days it's like some bastard nailed a ticket for the bus tour down the fucking hell to the front of my brain. For every wild everything depends on at first week of being madly in love kiss on a street corner. For every beautiful woman stopping to feel the sun on her face and every child dancing in clean rain. There's a kid living in its own shit in a dumpster somewhere while daddy sells his ass for milk money. Tanks breaking down unwanted houses just to stop homeless people squatting there. Time was this place didn't make sense and I could have and I could live with it. Either it's changed or I have. There's all the good things on this ticket, and pure fucking evil too. And all the same, I'm going down with you. Okay, monstering. Ugh. Ugh. Good morning. Jesus Christ, ow. Which one Which one did we fall asleep during? You passed out during Once in Bloody England. I made it to the end of Die, Bastard Vicar, Die. Don't know how you sat through big cold London gunmen myself. Going for a shower. Going for a shit. Television, inform me. Puritan Muse, data filtering presents Spider's personal hot menu. Abuse, violence, lies, theft, people having sex. This morning, Eskimo winter immigrant dies in police custody. Deranged artificial penis is loose in water supply. City senator in cash porn corruption storm. Senator. Senator Tarleton Sweeney, who has provided distinguished service to the streets of Vicarage Hill for 15 years. My entire ass. Labors under accusations of covered porno film funding, cash for filibuster, and other undeclared earnings and gifts this morning. All about Tarleton Sweeney, hosted by Clint Bill, an in-depth interview with full biography. <coughs> Where are my filthy assistants? Playing with shower attachments. Taking a dump the size of a birthday cake. Move yourselves, we're going monstering, huh? Monstering, fine old journalistic art, like kung fu. What is it? It's the art of abusing people. Of ambushing them with questions, following them with questions, hounding them with questions, driving them to their fucking graves with questions. It's sort of like being a photographer, except we've never yet killed any royalty doing it. Yet. Good things come to those who wait. Good morning, good morning. I prepared statement on these allegations if you kindly and quietly lend me your ear. Any responses from the press should ideally go to my office or my secretary system at Amfeed Senator Tarleton Sweeney. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, to address each and every one of these baseless accusations would waste both my time and yours. I have served my people in Congress as well as I could for 15 years. Only now, with my party back in power, do people seek to... Mr. Sweeney! Senator Sweeney, wait now, where was I? Mr. Sweeney! Who is that, damn it? Which one of you press people is so damn rude? Mr. Sweeney, what are the distinguishing features of your penis, Mr. Sweeney? I do not believe that I can have heard that correctly. Mr. Sweeney, for elimination of the suggestion that you participated in porn films you allegedly funded, Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Sweeney, we watched a film this morning. Do you have a joint in your penis, Mr. Sweeney? Where are you? You can't just howl the shit at me from cover. That's not how breast briefings work. This ain't a press briefing anymore. It's journalism. Mr. Sweeney! Mr. Sweeney, show us your penis! Show it to us now! 
Ignore my filthy assistance, Mr. Sweeney. They won't do a thing. Whip it out. Uh oh, no. He said, we need to see it for special journalistic purposes. That'll get you everywhere. You frighten him off. Ha 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 ha. Thorry. You didn't have to do that gnashing, chewing mime with those goddamn things. His dick's probably retracted up into his stomach now. We'll never get at it. Sweeney performs in porn film. Maybe. Jerusalem. It begins. What next? Oh, we have to crank this up to Wag Wagnerian proportions, Shannon. The entire city is baying for his prick, for God's sake. How much worse can we make it? Oh, okay, forget I said anything. Stupid question. What's the next step in destroying the poor fucker's life? I don't see why on the worst day of my professional life my daughter couldn't do me the favor of getting her genome reset. Kiss my gray ass, daddy. Senator Sweeney, your daughter's the least of our concerns now. About this TV spot. It's not the least of my concerns. I'm told to go on TV with my family and plead innocence, and my daughter tells me she grew up a backup vaginal orifice this morning. Want to see it, daddy? Want to film it for your sicko pals? Not that he knows what a vaginal orifice looks like anymore. For God's sake, Deborah. What's that? Mr. Sweeney, I hear all, Mr. Sweeney. When did you stop having sex with your wife, Mr. Sweeney? No! Mr. Sweeney, tell me of your wife's vaginal orifice, Mr. Sweeney. Sweeney's kid's a transient pestered by daddy for home videos. That's right, and wifey's gagging for it, but Sweeney won't play. That's right, anonymous tip. The record was Robert McGex. Senator Sweeney, I'd like to thank you and your wonderful family for joining me here today. Our pleasure, Robert. Glad to be here on the record, to set the record straight. Indeed. So when did you stop having sex with your wife, and does that have any bearing on your alleged porn business? What next? Some actual journalism, I think. Actual journalism, is that when you don't commit crimes? Hell no. It's when we commit really good crimes. Mr. Sweeney. You can't just shit all over the press, Mr. Sweeney. We have questions. Why did you hold up the debate on intelligent sexual culture scheme in the Senate when you were making porno? Mr. Sweeney. From Ugly Life Retail, the holographic user interface head bug face. First, for fine journalists. Okay, okay, we'll do some actual journalism later. Later, I'll have another bottle of Chilean Merlot, the Raspberry Pavlova, ten minutes of oral sex, and an ambulance, please. I'm trying to work out... Ugh. Don't belch on the fucking cigarettes, Yelena. Shut it. I'm trying to work out what good we're doing. Okay, Sweeney's obviously some kind of hired prick. But reading his conversations off window glass, shouting questions from inside his toilet, what are we achieving here? Right then, girls, attack wounds to the ready. This is about the journalism of attachment. Monstering is ultimately about giving a shit. It's about giving something back to these bastards, these people whom we somehow let run our goddamn lives for us. Giving them a taste of what it means to be us. Every law that curbs my basic human freedoms, every lie about the things I care for, every crime committed against me by their politics, that's what makes me get up and hound these fuckers, and I'll do that until the day I die or until my brain dries up or something. That's what we achieve. We show them they're accountable. We show them that just as they try to herd us back into cages of quiet mediocrity, we can chase them back to fucking hell with the truth. It's the journalism of attachment. It's caring about the world you report on. Some people say that's bad journalism. That there should be a detached, cold, unbiased view of the world in our news media. And if that's what you want... There are security cameras everywhere that you could watch tapes of. I want to see humans talking about human life personally. I want to see people who give a shit about the world. I want to see possessed journalists. Yes! I want to see people like me rising up with hate, laying about them with fiery eyes and steaming genitalia, possessed by ancient volcano gods from the Polynesian Islands, waving vast breasts and improbable penises at the secret chiefs of the world. Calm down now, come on. Easy, spider, easy, you're gonna burst a vein. Naked, glowing god journalist brown trousering the naughty ten four hours a day. A new p 
24 hours a day, a new planet Earth. Waiter, fresh underwear, seven blankets, and a bucket of moist towelettes. You bring us to the nicest places. I don't bring you anywhere if, you, if I can help it. You two never behave yourselves in public. We don't? Shut up. What are we doing here? What everyone else should have done. The scene of the crime. This is where Sweeney's porno films were supposedly made. How do you know? I had some old contacts in the sex business. They tell me Sweeney had more than one film made here. You fucking bastard, Jerusalem. You bring these two gorgeous bits of stuff here to expect me to talk business? How much to get them to play together while we jerk off over them, eh? Eh? Fucking gorgeous. Ah, but you wanted to meet me out of your profound concern for the condition of politics in the city today. And so soon after the election, too. Democracy is the theory that holds the common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. Mencken. Filthy assistants, meet Mr. Grisham. Grisham has been the city's chief pornographer for something like 150 years now. No one gets off in this town without him knowing about it. And thanks to his rogue secretion dwelling nanosensors, that is literally true in over 18 city districts. So it occurred to me, if a clever man really was funding porno while trying to filibuster sex legislation out of, exi out of existence, and that got leaked, I leaked it, because no one else would know shit about it. Busted, let's go. No, this is background, strictly off the record. That's always been my deal with Grisham. We have journalistic ethics, Yelena. Put your attack womb away. Meet Melissa. She lives in this house. This is the Burlitz Abrams district. That ring any bells, ladies? Right about the time when Melissa had just gotten old enough to get herself drinks of water from the faucet, an autonomy terrorist, terrorist group dropped intellect suppressant into the water supply. She's not bright. She doesn't understand much. She's poor and she gets fucked up a lot. But on the other hand, she's incredibly flexible, not too choosy, and comes like a banshee. So it worked out okay in the end. Sweeney made more than one movie here. There were several private consumption jobs, and he stiffed me on payments. And that after I... And after I paid him... My God. Hold on. New machine here dicking me about. There we go. So I thought so. You paid him to filibuster out the intelligent sexual cultural scheme. Sure I did. Sexual freedom, the erasure of taboo by education, the intelligent discussion of sexual mores, these things are no good to a pornographer, Spider. If it ain't kind of creepy and dirty and mysterious and forbidden, guys don't get off. In my own form of government, Spider, I need to keep people stupid as much as a smiler does. Picture, time code, stamp. What? Know what this is? It's a G-reader. Reads genomes, hunts down rogue scraps of genetic structure, that sort of thing. These things only hit the streets a week or two back. I don't know what exactly was going on here, but she's got scraps of Sweeney clinging to her. And so do you. Know what the best thing about G-readers is? Admissible in court. And so is this. Voice recording with GPS and world clock stamp and seal. What happened to your journalistic ethics, you little motherfucker? The truth, Grisham. It's all I need. We couldn't have done all that first? You people just don't want me to have fun, do you? What are you reading, Shannon? The whole. They say a Sweeney press conference has been flash scheduled, and the vice president will be in attendance to defend Sweeney. They haven't worked it out yet. The Smiler and his poll intel team? When is it scheduled? About 40 minutes from now, Greenbrook. We can just make that, if you're with me. Lonely City, produced in conjunction with a TV show. Essay sponsored by Lonely City Television. Ah, one of three. Okay, so here's where we're going to end it for now, guys. And uh, we'll pick up with Lonely City. As you see, we got through a pretty good amount. Uh, we got another thing where Spider is basically doing his essays, which are amazing. I still think that the work there is just great um and we got some more of the story too so there's a bunch of interesting things that's happening and things are getting even more uh heated to find out what the fuck's going on with mr sweeney right at any rate this is a grim lord and i'm out for grim's comics corner with 
Transmetropolitan.